Okay, so these are, are patterns for cleaning up bug data. Oh, <laughs> I broke PowerPoint. Okay, uh, well, bug reports are useful for software engineers and data scientists alike because they provide insight about the quality of the software and its development process. However, they often contain data that is incomplete, not correct, and biased, and may lead you to wrong conclusions. We can say that bug reports are like vegetables. You have to clean them up before using them. <laughs> so uh, I'll show you, show you uh, two patterns to help clean up your bug data. Okay. The first one is called look out for mess updates. Here's some context. Imagine today Joe, a developer, worked on two bugs and updated the corresponding bug reports. Of course, as a data science, you, you don't know when he's working, you just see the updates. So if he updated two bug reports, you conclude that he worked on two bugs. What if the other day Joe, Joe updated more than 2,000 bugs? What can you say? As I showed in last year's MSR, in, in this case, mass, uh, the updates do not represent actual work. These are mass updates intended to clean up the bug repository. And there sh therefore, you should discard them from your analysis. So our problem is to determine which changes to bug reports were the resu result of a mass update. Uh, for this solution, you need to have changes in bug reports you have to know what changes, the date of the change, the user who made the change, and the comment who wrote, uh, who made the change. Mm. You have to select one, one type of change, for example, changing the status to verify. Okay. So now um, I, I have two solutions here. The first one is visual. It just put the accumulated number of changes over time. Then uh, CK unusually high cliffs, and these cliffs are mass updates. The second solution is numeric uh, group chains by date, user, and comment, counter groups, and these groups with higher counts are mass updates. Of course, the, there's the, the question. Uh, the, the main challenge is, is to find a suitable threshold. So, how, how many updates? do you have to have to characterize a mass update? This, in fact, could be a whole new pattern okay, that I will not present here. <laughs> and the second one is what old wine tastes better. So uh, imagine you want to predict which bug reports will undergo some change. For example, which bugs will get reopened. Then you need a training set so you can learn the outcome, reopen or not, based on bug, the bug's attributes, like severity and age. But of course, you can use two recent bugs for training, because the outcome may, may not be known yet. In fact, the outcome can change in the next few days or, or weeks. So you, you should discard two recent bugs. But the question is how to determine which bug reports are too recent to be classified. Um, for this solution, you need the date of last change of your data set and the bug reports with creation date and whether it has undergone the change or not, for example, whether it has been reopened. Um, so first you measure each bug's age from its creation date to the last date in the last change, the data of the last change in your data set. And then you guess a threshold so that bugs younger than the threshold are considered too recent to be classified. For example, if you choose for two days, you have to discard the two last bugs here. After that, you estimate the confidence that the remaining non-reopened bugs will never be reopened. And there's a formula in the paper for that, simple formula. And of course, if the confidence is not high enough, you, you can just choose another threshold and, and repeat the procedure. Uh, of course, there's a trade-off. More confidence means less data and vice versa. And you may ask, ask me how to implement all, all of this. Do you have any source code to show? Uh, yes, it's in the paper. And th there's a GitHub <laughs> repository, too, that you, you can check in the paper. Okay. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Thank you.